Good evening, campers, dreamers, and oh, I forgot. Damn it. I got my little bites muffins for the review. Oh, there we go. They're pumpkins. Is the season. <laughs> Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. Yes, we are still rooting around, having fun, kicking around our pumpkins. It is Splatterthon. And this is our first official review for Splatterthon, I, I guess, uh, yeah. other than Terrifier, but like new film review. So Little Bites, uh, yes, is something that uh, was at Fantastic Fest, but we got after the fact. So this was something we had to wait a little bit on before we could get our review out. But hey, this was one that uh, we didn't know much about, as usual, but uh, definitely caught our interest. There was some subject matter in the description and the images that we saw that, uh, if you know Luke and I, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely intriguing. Luke, tell the audience a little bit of uh, your thoughts going into Little Bites. Well, this one appeared pretty high on our uh, 31 films to check out in mm -hmm. October. Uh, and I got to say, that trailer absolutely sold me. You see a creature in that thing that is covered in blood. And I'll tell you, I it was take my money, please, at that point. I really wanted to see what kind of storytelling, what they were bringing to this film. Because it really did have a particular tone to it. You know, sometimes that's hard to capture within a two, two and a half minute trailer. Sometimes they show their best footage, so it's kind of dicey. But this one, um, it really had my intrigue. I was excited to see what they were going to lay out, what kind of narrative they were going to do, especially in more modern storytelling. You never know what you're going to get when you reach into that bag. So, you know, this one had my intrigue, and I was really excited for it. Yeah, I was too. I mean, again, like I said, it, it, you read that description, you see that image of the monster... Uh, just like you said, covered in blood, shrouded in darkness, and you just start, your your mind is racing. You know, the effects look great, uh, little bites, you know, you're kind of running through your head of just what this could mean, what kind of creature we're dealing with. And, you know, obviously, knowing us, uh, my head, of course, I, I said to you, I want werewolf, but, you know, can't always get what you want. Because, uh, unfortunately, I can't say it, it's not a werewolf, but... It's not a bad thing either, because I think that uh, just going into some of my positives about the film, uh, I think Little Bites has some very intriguing lore and concepts to it that uh, I got to say definitely had me engaged throughout the film. I, I really, really loved uh, this monster. I thought that it was a really cool idea. I thought that it was a really well executed in both design and very much in performance. I, I thought that that was definitely one of the biggest highlights of the film for me yes i'll second that 100 percent. i was excited again with that trailer to see what they were going to do here from a lore perspective actually get a good look at the monster that we have here at little bites um which is named agyar a really intriguing name i would say and i'll say they delivered in that aspect um they really have a great mystique to this uh character this creature of sorts where you really want to learn more and john sklarloff i believe is the name there mm -hmm. um uh that's portraying agyar i'll say his delivery absolutely amazing before we hopped on here i said you know i could listen to this guy read a book because there are some long shots here of dialogue of just kind of conversing and the way they light the creature uh really has a mystique to him i would say it was really terrifying in certain aspects, the way just the design is in general, kind of how they conceal that creature of, you know, you really want a good a good look, but they do a really good job of just concealing them and, and keeping that nature of mm, what else is behind those shadows. So that absolutely captivated me, especially the dialogue choice, this, the, the way this creature carries himself. It's not some uh, just barbaric kind of creature it has those barbaric aspects but i think the scary nature of it is how intuitive and how smart the creature is in itself so uh, for me uh, from a creature aspect this one really did hit the mark for me i agree and i also think that our our lead actress uh 
Kirsty Fox or Chrissy Fox, sorry, she was definitely a highlight for me here. Um, I thought that her performance was pretty raw at times. I think that uh, just like our creature, our actor there who had to get in a lot of prosthetics, she also does have uh, quite a few. If you can take the title Little Bites, pretty literal there for you. Um, and I think that she sold a lot of that really well. There's an element uh, towards the beginning of this film, and it's throughout uh, using a bell. And there's one sequence in uh, particular with her in a bed and then you hear the bell and it just literally I could sense the exhaustion on her. And I just was like, OK, I'm, I'm sold on what's going on here so far. And yeah, I think that she really holds her own. I think that uh, her performance is pretty consistent throughout, but gets really strong when her daughter uh, gets involved a little later in the story. But overall, I, I thought that she was uh, very well cast, very well acted, a, a good anchor for our story here. I like that you use the uh, word exhausting, because when you really look at the interactions here uh, between Aguirre and um, her name's Mindy, I think. Yeah, Mindy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Mindy, it, this, I, I, as I was watching it, I actually had a thought to myself, this almost, in certain aspects, of it feels like a stage play, because there are heavy yeah. elements of dialogue that are being delivered between just two characters and we're kind of cutting back and forth and we really do sit a long time in some of the the settings of just a room and so in that aspect it really did feel like a stage play but when you have that kind of writing and that dynamic it really does depend on how those characters mesh well together and i'll say agar and mindy they they work so well off each other because agar is this all-seeing all-knowing kind of character mindy is this exhausted, tired kind of character that has been dealing with Agar for so long. And I think that is conveyed through their interactions here, where as we're that kind of third party just watching these interactions go, you really do feel sorry for her in certain aspects of like, oh my gosh, she just cannot get away. And for me, I think that really did work. And you mentioned the bell. It's such a great audio cue in in horror films i think they use it in one of the annabelle films and you mm -hmm. know it's so effective in that now i'll say it gives you chills as as you get further and further into little bites as you hear that because you know what's going to happening how that dynamic's going to change and what could what could you be in store for especially uh with where this agar character is you know that kind of um shadows they put him in just the darkness that is is consumed by agar so as soon as you do hear that bell it, it's something that almost does get exhausted because he's like oh here we go again you know so i think they really did capture that really well through the lens um it's something where i was eager to see that next interaction but also terrified which is a really hard dynamic to pull off i agree yeah i think that that's definitely uh they they, they drive a really solid dynamic between the characters and it, you have to it, it, with a story like this and especially where the material goes it, it's essential and i really think that they nailed that part of it um i will say there's a, a bit of i guess you want to call them maybe a legacy cast here uh, at least a, a few big names that pop up here and there uh the likes of the great barbara crampton uh she's in this for a little bit heather langing camp pops up for a, a brief appearance uh same with uh bonnie aaron's and, of course, uh, Dead Meets Own, James A. Janice is in this. I don't know if you caught him, Luke. We didn't discuss him. But, uh, yeah, no, very, uh, you know, they're there. Um, and also Chaz Bono, I should say. But they're, they're all there. They're not there for very long. This is a very centered story. So if you're going in kind of expecting, like, a Heather Lane Camp kind of, you know, per, like, huge performance, yeah, you're not going to get that. But I think that for what they are there for, um they're they're interesting enough i think that they they bring some interesting scenes some interesting conundrums and in some aspects but i i definitely think that they are there to serve the purpose of having you know a name attached to the film uh again it's a very centered story around a mother a monster and a daughter as the poster says and they don't really try to stray too hard from that yeah, if you're going in here expecting uh, a big role for Barbara Crampton or Heather Langenkamp or any of the other names, don't really expect that. I think maybe that's a minor strike for me where in, in the trailer, you know, we don't necessarily center any anything around them as a focal point. But, you know, you're excited to see these legacy characters in here and see what they're going to do. You know, unfortunately, it's just kind of, hey, they're here and they're there. And then we're off screen, you know, on to the next thing. I will say one of the probably most notable scenes there's a really nice like 
audio cue horror in here that is involving Barbara Crampton's uh, character. And for me, that really did work. The way that it shot, the way the audio pops, um, it really does kind of hit you in those feels of, of feeling terrified. So I, I think that did work, but I was hoping more from those characters. But like you said, it's a very central story. We only have, for the most part, Mindy and Aguiar and all these other kind of characters coming in and out. So, you know, don't expect too much there going into it or else I think you're going to be underwhelmed. They really are just kind of there, I feel, to, you know, get eyes on the property to, you know, have those legacy characters to say, hey, Barbara Crampton's in this new movie that you don't know anything about, but hey, turn it on. So, you know, don't really expect big media roles from any of these characters. Yeah, and going into uh, just some of my bigger negatives with the film, I, I think on the whole... Um, there, there's a message in this film. There's a, there, there's kind of a, uh, an arc, if you want to say, in here, or, or at least something that's kind of leading to what is, I guess, led to be kind of a surprise, maybe a twist. Um, but it, it feels very plotted. It, it feels like something that I know you and I both said we figured out very quickly. Um, and it's, it's tough to decipher whether that's the intent or if it is something that is supposed to be more of a reveal. I think that on my first initial like as soon as the film ended I, I it left me feeling a bit cold on the film I, I was definitely a bit more on the disappointed side um especially because again i had kind of built this thing up as being one thing when it turned into something else it turned into being a much more somber more serious story and you know i think that if you're expecting that you could have the same experience as i do um, and I think on the whole, it, it feels a little rocky at times in like kind of where the story is headed. I think like we kind of we start off in one direction uh, with Mindy doing some things, bringing some people, some characters in. And then we kind of focus back up once another character is reintroduced or introduced to us for the first time. And we kind of center the last half of this movie. And it does leave me feeling a bit hot and cold on it. I'm not going to lie. It's something that I don't know if maybe a, another viewing would help, but it did kind of uh, give me an odd watching experience the first time. I, it's tough for me to even explain. It was just kind of, I was very in and out on this one. Yeah. Um, it presents some, I guess, interesting dynamics. that I don't know necessarily if I would have wandered down those avenues. Um, so, you know, I think the strongest portions of this film are when it's Mindy and Aguiar. Now we do have I these agree. other, when we have these other characters coming in, um, you know, Mindy kind of gets this idea and we kind of go off and not necessarily these side missions, but she's trying to accomplish something different. And for me, those scenes don't feel as natural. They don't feel as fitting or as engaging as when it's just Mindy and Aguiar on screen. And I think, you know, th that times it loses something, and I don't know necessarily if we really need them because they don't really go anywhere. You know, and so they, they feel like they're coming out of a different movie. Honestly, like there there's parts of it that definitely feel like we're there was like maybe two ideas for this story, it, and maybe like they were put in later. There's a, a scene in here, and you know we're not going to dive deep into any of this, but there's a scene with Mindy and another character, and. It, there's some points in there where I chuckled a little bit. I don't know if it was meant to be comedic or not, if they were trying to mesh in some comedy in this. It just didn't feel like it was fitting of where we had been from Little Bites, where we start and then where we end up going. There's just this kind of middle portion that sometimes gets a little comical in certain instances, especially once we're met with extreme horror, as I was talking about Barbara Crampton's character in, in a certain aspect, where it, that kind of stuff is... is playing a little closer than I would have liked where we don't really get that breathing room to say, okay, I just had a comedic moment and then we're diving deeper into this somber, tense horror element to it. It just felt a little weird, a little jumbled. Now, we kind of get back on track for the most part and just sometimes that kind of, it's not like blatant comedy, but it just kind of feels like maybe a little too comedic instances that didn't really feel natural to the storytelling. And I think, you know, it kind of takes you out for a minor bit. And especially when you're building such a somber tone through this film, you don't really want to go on these different avenues that might have a different tone to it. So I think when it's not just Mindy and Aguirre on screen, the film does lose something just because I don't know if the film, if the maybe the direction 100% wasn't there of what the characters should be feeling, but it doesn't seem like they capture the chemistry that Aguiar and Mindy have when they're on screen. I, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that's a very well, good way to put it. 
Um, I guess on, on the whole, I'm gonna, where I'm sitting with Little Bites is I'm going to give this a worth a watch. I think that it's definitely competent. Uh, it gets a little lost in the middle, like uh, Luke was just saying there. Um, but on the whole, I think that the character of Aguilar is interesting. Uh, he, it's definitely a performance that I enjoyed my time with. I really enjoyed uh, Chrissy Fox's performance and dynamic with uh, Aguilar, I thought that they were both excellent, and it does present some interesting ideas with admittedly a payoff that is a bit predictable and something that we've seen before, but I don't think that this is nearly as offensive as what some other films have done it, because again, it's one of those things where I couldn't decide if it was intentional or if it was something that was supposed to be a reveal. So, you know, maybe this warrants another watch for me to really cement my full feelings on it, but I'm going to sit with worth a watch. I think that if you're interested, if this seems like something that you'd like to see a little bit more of a somber kind of ancient monster tale uh, set in the modern day, I think that uh, you'll get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with you with uh, worth a watch on this one. I think, you know, the message here, um, if you're really looking at it, just the dialogue's a little heavy in certain instances for me to believe that it wasn't intentional. At least, you know, I hope they were trying to at least the, lead the audience into a certain direction um, because it, with the dialogue and as you're sitting with it, it seems a little heavy handed in those instances. It's not bad. It's just, you know, you can understand the message that they're trying to convey um, and they do it pretty suggestively, I guess. And, you know, from a performance perspective, I think uh, really well done between um, Mindy and Aguiar. I think the chemistry is absolutely there. Aguiar's performance is this ancient creature of sorts. It's absolutely haunting. There's a great scene in here with him standing in a doorway that I would recommend to anyone. I think it's very haunting. And just the way they conceal him in the shadows, especially him drenched drenched in blood at certain times i think it works rather well um so i think there is a lot here to like i just don't know with that somber tone of how much rewatchability is here i feel like and not from a, a bad way in terms of filmmaking i feel like you do feel exhausted after watching this because the message is so heavy that i i don't know if you're going to be eager enough to jump right back into this one um, you know, when it's when it pops up on streaming, and you can watch it an endless amount of time. So for me, this is going to be worth a watch. There's a lot of great stuff here. Just a couple of strikes as well. Yeah, very, very mixed on little bites. But I think that a lot of people will find this to be uh, very exciting and entertaining. And I, I agree. I think that there are elements that definitely work. So not the home run that we were looking for, but certainly not a bad film at all. I definitely am curious to see uh, what Spider-1 brings us next time. Uh, I think especially because there's a lot of creativity here. Um, I definitely think that with a few more passes on the script, like you said, this kind of being like a stage play. I could see this, if you, especially if you cut down some of those portions we weren't crazy about, uh, as being a, a really well done on stage, very interesting screenplay, especially with how they handle Aguilar and just how he's presented in the film itself. Like, I could see that on stage, the doorway scene you're talking about, be incredible. It would be awesome. Uh, but yeah. That's going to wrap us up here. You guys can catch this thing in select theaters on October 4th, so tomorrow. And uh, yeah. That's that's going to be everything for Little Bites. So I'm going to wrap it up now and uh, get us back out here. But we have lots more stuff on the horizon for Splatterthon. So uh, you stay put. You uh, you check out the channel. More will be on the horizon. Lots of big stuff coming. Boy, howdy. I'm excited. So uh, all righty, guys. Other than that, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember... Stay scared. I wanted to ask how Fantastic Fest was for you, because not only do you have Little Bites, but you also had Terrifier 3. So kind of had two really big movies going on at that festival. Yeah, I mean, that it was the coolest experience. Honestly, I felt like it, I was it wasn't my life kind of, you know, I was like, is this a dream? I was kind of like not. I, I was like overwhelmed by all of it, but also so excited. Um, I've always wanted to be a part of Fantastic Fest just because so many films I love came from there um, and directors. And and so the fact that I had to on the same weekend, opening weekend was insane. But um, but yeah, it was so much fun to. Well, the first one we saw was Terrifier on opening night. And uh, 
you know, it's doing a film like that is nerve wracking because you know how crazy it gets. And obviously I was on set and I, but actually watching it completed and it was really fun. Like just having people cheer <laughs> and uh, it, it just like, you know, one of those really fun crowd interaction films. And then, and then when we got to little bites. Um, it was really, we'd never seen it with an audience and, um, you know, I think we both were like, wow, this is darker than we remember it being, but it was really exciting. And it was nice to hear people respond to moments we hoped they would respond to. And just, you know, to get to share a movie like this, that we literally did every job and we get to, you know, go and show it in front of the Fantastic Fest audience was just insane to me. Um, yeah, it was, I, I don't, I'll never forget it. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Spider, how was Fantastic Fest for you bringing your film to that audience? I mean, I feel like that audience is the perfect group of people to premiere mm -hmm. something like this to it because it's like, you know, we're there for our terrifiers and all these other gruesome, explosive splatter fest stuff. But we absolutely love when a movie can kind of hit you a little bit deeper than you're expecting. Yeah, I, I mean, everything Chrissy said, I mean, it was it was a great experience. It was so exciting. It's always ex look when you're a kid and you, and you have these dreams of making movies and the fact that you can. The fact that you get to watch your own movie in, in a movie theater of any kind and not to mention at a, you know, the country's biggest genre fest, it's it's, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it's it's kind of unbelievable, you know, and it was such a fun experience and everybody there is just so cool and. The, the spirit of that everyone goes to that festival with um you know it was really great and, and we get to do it again in a couple nights at beyond fest here in la so we're very excited about that because being in la a lot of the cast and crew get to go to this one so that's going to be a whole other experience and um yeah it was cool but like i like chrissy said we were like wow this movie's fucking dark you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you make a movie and you live in it so you know you so closely but until you watch it with other people mm -hmm. sometimes you don't see it as others may see it so we were very and i say that in the in the most exciting positive yeah. possible way that it's so dark i love it i think it's great <laughs> yeah i mean it's i seriously was honest when i said like i was blown away by just the messaging and the kind of tonality that the film takes I, I did not expect like you know like I said a monster movie to really kind of go there I was really impressed with the fact that you know um and I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible for my audience but like that the creature speaks and everything yeah. like I thought that was so awesome and so different and so unique so I wanted to ask I know you guys both work very closely hand in hand with bringing projects together but Spider what was it like kind of conceptualizing this what was it that really made you sit down and say i want to tell this story i want to create this creature and i want to bring it to screen yeah i mean uh, as far as the story i mean it really is just all all inspired by our experience as parents and in the struggles that that brings and the in, you know the, the the roller coaster ride that that can be of 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 immense joy and terrible disappointments and in fear and anxiety and all that stuff and to wrap that whole concept up and have a monster represent that is really functioning in the, the, you know, historically the, 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 the function of horror in science fiction is that that's what great horror and science fiction do is they take real life scenarios that we can all relate to and package them in a fantastic way. So, so that was always the intent and, and thank you for the, the props on the monster. Yeah. When we created Agyar, I really wanted to find a, a unique way to represent a monster and not just the, you know, a, a Jason or a Michael that just sort of stalks silently. And I didn't want it to be like some wisecracking Chucky or, 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 or some paranormal entity. You know, I wanted this guy to be a monster in the classical sense, but, but, but have his, his, uh, his, his torture on this poor woman not only be physical, but psychological and almost, you know, in, in some ways, the things that he says to her are more painful than the, the physical bites that he's, um, that he's, um, that it's he's little. doing on her. So yeah, it, it was, it was really fun to come up with this guy. And I think we, we did a really great job. I, I would agree. I think that there's definitely a lot more when it comes to a lot of their conversations, which again, was just 
probably my favorite aspect of the film just because you don't get such an intellectual side to a lot of critters and things like this it makes him feel very ancient and very like you know i want to say very like not universal monsters like but very much like a dracula-esque kind of character where it's like he's smart he's intellectual he understands what he's doing and he's putting her in a very uh difficult spot so um christy i gotta ask like um when it comes to the performance of this, was there anything that gave you any hesitation? Was there ever a point where you're just like, how am I going to kind of put myself in that place where it's like, I have to basically act out that I have a monster that is drinking my blood, but also have to be thinking about all these emotional beats of being a mother who's getting all these eyes put on her and saying like, you know, Oh, well now we're going to call social services and we're going to have all this stuff. Like what was it like getting in that headspace? I mean, it was easier than you'd think because of the dynamic. I, I, I connected so much to the character, first of all, like the script and just, you know, the underlying meanings of this film, like, you know, whether it's parenthood, which obviously we have a daughter together and I would do anything for her. So that was an easy connection. And then, you know, also just like a, a, the abuse dynamic, you know what I mean? And, and that was something that was really heavy and really important um, for me to portray and honestly. And then also just, you know, I think we can all relate to the feeling of being maybe misunderstood or judged when people don't really know what's going on inside and, and at home. And, and so I really kept all of those things in the back of my head. And um, we kind of, when we started shooting, we started shooting right away with the daughter and with the monster. Um, and that was really helpful too, because the first the first scene I shot with the monster, I was like terrified. I opened the door and I could just hear his voice and I couldn't see him, but I knew what he looked like. And it was just, a, I, I almost, I couldn't have made myself feel the way I felt. It just, it was just very organic. And I didn't really rehearse with him intentionally because it made me, he made me so uncomfortable that I wanted him to make me feel that uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, I just sort of allowed myself to fall into this character and the sadness. And, you know, certainly when you're already in that headspace and you, you spend a lot of time being emotional and trying to control your emotions and put some, you know, like this character, she's so angry sometimes, or she's so afraid. Um, but she never wants to show that. And obviously you can read it on her face, but she's trying so hard to keep it together. And so that was really a fun challenge as an actress to get to be a character that flawed, but that strong. And so I just allowed that to happen. And then, you know, by the time I got to all these supporting characters coming in, like, like Barbara Crampton's character, it was very easy to just be defensive and upset because I've already gone through all of this stuff and I know what this woman's going through now. So I just, I, I just kind of let it happen and I let myself just live in it. And it took me a while when we finished um, shooting the film to get my bubbly self back. I was like just in a weird funk, but I think that that's okay. I think that I felt like I gave a really honest performance because I just let myself fall into it. Do the horse shit gonna do it live? Put splatter cast kick it every day they lie. Splatter cast, 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 splatter